In the gospel reading today, our Lord tells us that those to whom, from whom more have been forgiven, they will love more. Now, we might look at that and say, well, you know, there are some pretty big sinners and, well, I'm not one of them. Dumb idea, but we might say something like that. And therefore, if I've only been forgiven a little, then therefore I can only love God a little. That's not the case. Because each and every one of us should be able to look at ourselves just as the saints did and recognize that we are the worst sinner that has ever lived. Now, again, we're going to say, no, 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 no. No, there are people out there who are doing horrible, horrible things, and I haven't done that. Praise God you haven't done that but that doesn't exonerate us. Just as we heard in the gospel, this Pharisee is looking at this woman and says to himself, if this man, Jesus, knew who and what sort of woman this might be, that she is a sinner. (laughs) Really, and you're not? He thinks that because her sins are bigger than his, that therefore, It's not a big deal for him. She's a sinful woman, but thankfully I'm not. No, we're all sinners. And if you look at some of the saints, some of them actually who never in their life committed a mortal sin, they will tell you that they are the worst sinner of all. And you look at them and say, how could they say that? I mean, look at the, all they committed was a sin this big because they recognize the grace that God has given to them. And they recognize that they violated that. It doesn't matter if they sinned with some huge sin, because they knew better. And they committed a sin with full will. No, it wasn't a mortal sin. But in their mind, they would look at it and say, I can't believe that I would do something so horrible. So we look at others and we think, who am I to judge them? As St. Augustine said, were it not for the grace of God, that would be me. And the only reason it's not me is not because I'm so good that therefore I'm not doing these things, but God knew that I'm so weak that there was no possible way that I could get out of it if I set myself into it. So he kept me from getting into anything worse. But that's because I'm basically already done the worst that I could do and still survive. Now that being said, then each one of us needs then to look at at what Jesus said. Isn't it interesting he didn't say, who do you think will be more grateful The one who is forgiven a little or the one who is forgiven a lot? No, he said, who will love him more? Isn't that interesting? So when we look at ourselves, if, first of all, we look at everyone else and judge them to be worse sinners than we are, then we're only going to love God a little bit because we don't think that we've really been forgiven much. (laughs) Good thing God didn't have to forgive me very much like he has those people. No, 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 no. God has forgiven me immense amounts. Yes, he's forgiven those other people too. But as we've already seen, if we can see ourselves as the worst sinner, then what God has forgiven me is more than what he's forgiven those people because I knew better and maybe they don't. Because I had the grace to not sin and maybe they didn't, but I chose to sin anyway, which may, maybe perhaps makes my sin worse than theirs even though their thing might be bigger than mine. Now we look at it a little bit differently. If I can recognize that God has forgiven me an immense amount, then I have to ask myself if the one who is forgiven more should love more, 
Do I? Do I have that same desire as we see in the beloved in the first reading? Have you seen him whom my heart loves? Do we really seek the Lord Jesus? Do we really seek him for who he is, not for what we can get from him, but for who he is? Because we love him. That's what we're supposed to be about. Now we see in that first reading that the the beloved is looking for her beloved and can't find him. She's asking the guard, she's asking around. It's what happens in the prayer life. God has to purify us. He has to purify our charity. In other words, he has to get rid of the selfishness in us. And so he hides himself. He's right there. We just can't perceive him. We don't feel him. We don't recognize his presence. It's dark. It's difficult. It's painful sometimes. That doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. It means you're doing something right. Because God is purifying you to love more. Because he knows that if you have the ability to sin as the worst sinner in the world, then you also have the ability to love as the greatest beloved in the world. That's the capacity that each one of us has. And we will only have the capacity to love when we can recognize the necessity that we have on him to be forgiven because our sins are the worst. If our sins are the worst, that means that I can love the most. And that's what he wants from each one of us, to love the most to love as much as we can possibly love. But it has to be loving him first so that we can love the others around us because that's the way love flows. It has to come from him to us and then through us to others. So do we really seek him? Do we really want to love him? Or do we keep him at an arm's distance? Because it's scary, it's vulnerable, it's painful to let him in too close. Because you know what? He wants to get rid of my sinfulness, and he wants to purify me of my selfishness, and he wants me to be holy, and he wants me to be able to love, and that's really scary. So we don't look for him. We just want him at an arm's distance. We want him close, but not too close, because it gets uncomfortable. If we're doing that, we're not loving him. Imagine going home today and looking at your spouse and saying, I I really love you at this distance. Don't get too close. I don't don't, don't want you any closer than this. But, you know, I, I do love you. Really? What are they going to say to that? Glad you love me at an arm's distance. Isn't that nice? And we want the Lord close. He wants to be inside of us. He is inside of us, but we just don't allow ourselves to recognize that. So we need to open our hearts to receive him. But before we can receive his love, we have to receive his forgiveness. That's why it goes back to that point. If we can recognize what a sinner we are, then we can recognize how much we are loved. And when we know how much we are loved, then we can love in return. That's what God wants. If we can look at ourselves and recognize I'm the worst sinner in the world, then we can look at him and recognize he is calling us to be the greatest lover in the world.